Last time on Improv Tabletop, Dave Skullcrusher, Dr. Stephen Bond, and Trex were getting a little bit introspective. Dave thought back on his history with his father, who wanted so desperately to bring honor to his baking family, and finds that Dave is his only hope for redemption. We spent some time in the memories of Dr. Stephen Bond, his relationship with Professor Chumwald, the man who took him under his wing, financed his way through college, and has been there to support his study of velociraptors and their humanity every step along the way. We went back into the flawed memory of Trex and found his relationship with Dr. Fortinbras to be perhaps not as straightforward and good as he might have originally imagined. With a bit of existential dread in his heart, he went to speak with Timmy Tommy and found that perhaps there is a greater sense of purpose ahead of him. The following day, they all returned to the compound to begin filming for the next competition of Jurassic Bake Off, and it was revealed that the new judge was Trax, another sapient velociraptor with four opposable thumbs on each hand. Apparently, another experiment created by Professor Fortinbras, one improved upon from Trex. As Peter Applewood was beginning to give the instructions for the next competition, Trax pulled a lever, opening up one of the pens containing some of the other dinosaurs, and, uh... Peter Applewood was about to get completely mauled by an Ankylosaurus when Dave, thinking quickly, blinded the Ankylosaurus with a large serving bowl filled with cream of wheat, and we find ourselves in the midst of quite a bit of chaos. How are our heroes going to get out of this mess that has been created in Jurassic Bake Off? What's shaking? You're listening to Improv Tabletop, the Fate RPG actual play where we make up everything on the spot. I'm Ned Wilcock, your host and GM, and today I'm joined by... Caleb Anderton, your inferior superior. Evan Peterson, your improvisational performer who's already running out of introductions for himself. JP, your doctor who you could trust if you wanted to. So we're going to just jump feet first back into the chaos. Let's set the stage a little bit more. So you guys are at your stations and the door is opening up and Kylosaurus is there. Uh, Peter Applewood has just noticed this Ankylosaurus and is screaming bloody murder trying to get away from it. Production assistants and managers are scattering about trying to do what they can. You see a couple of them are reaching for some of those safari rifles like Alicia fired at the beginning of the first competition, Uh, except you imagine that maybe confetti is not what's going to be coming out of these ones. But uh, amidst all of this chaos, you can see Dave and uh, Trex, because you were still watching this shady, shady individual, Trax is there just tapping the tips of his four opposable thumbs together, very much in that (laughs) classic villain sort of look and just has this wicked grin on his face. So, uh, let's go ahead, and since we're in the midst of quite a bit of action, let's roll some initiative to see how this is going to play out. So are we rolling with quick? Ah, yes. Go ahead and roll with quick. That is a plus one for Trex. Trex, not Trex. I'm Trex. (laughs) I have introduced unnecessary complication. (laughs) That's a minus one for Dave. And a plus one for Dr. Bond. So... Trex and Dr. Bond, you can decide who wants to go first on your count. So we're actually going to begin with you guys. Uh, Trex and Dr. Bond, how would you like to respond to this situation you see unfolding before you? Go for it, Doctor. Well, I immediately hide under a table. (laughs) Seems pretty on brand for Dr. Bond so far. Uh, Go ahead and roll a sneaky check to see how well you can hide yourself. One. One. All right. So that's going to bring us to Trex. What would you like to do? Uh, my killer animal instinct kicks in, and I run toward Peter Applewood. But instead of attacking him, I jump over him to defend him from this approaching Ankylosaurus. All right. So you rush up. Bam, you land right in front of it. Uh, Is there anything that you would like to attempt to do? Or are you taking more of the defensive standpoint? I'd like to uh, defend, but I'd like to snarl and hiss and roar very menacingly to see if I can intimidate it away. All right, roll a flashy check. All righty, that is... 
Sorry, that's a plus one. All right. It also rolled a plus one. So in your attempt to intimidate, uh, you succeed, but at a minor cost. The Ankylosaurus looks down at you, and it shakes the bowl of cream of wheat off of its head, sees you there snarling, and it freaks out. It turns around to start running away from you, but in doing so, uh, not realizing that its large club of a tail is flinging around as well, that's going to catch you in the side and deal one stress to you. <clears throat> but the Ankylosaurus is now rushing off, though you do see uh, further off in the field, additional dinosaurs are beginning to converge upon this exit from the pen. Small mechanical question, Ned. Yes. Does our sleep at night remove stress, or is stress kind of permanent in this uh, rule set? Yes, your stress would all have been removed, so those are not going to linger, and you're all back at three fate points. Okay. All right, so at that point, that's going to bring us to everybody else, Peter Applewood is going to also run and try and hide underneath the table. Um, and that table actually ends up being exactly the same one that Dr. Bond is hidden under. <laughs> he ducks underneath and turns and sees you and just kind of jumps. He's like, oh, goodness, this was not supposed to happen, Dr. Bond. I'm terribly sorry. This is not what we had planned at all. No apologies necessary. Um, I'm just uh, just as surprised as you are that this sort of thing happened. But um, if we peek out a little bit, we might be able to see some raptors in action. And he says, oh, goodness, that sounds like it would be terribly frightening, but also really freaking awesome. And he peeks his head just ever so slightly above the table. <laughs> um, at that point, you see uh, a bunch of the other dinosaurs are beginning to converge. You've got uh, your stegosaurs, your triceratops, a full-on brontosaurus with the massive long neck is trailing up behind them, and they're all rushing to try and escape from this enclosure. Let's see, Trex and Dave, since you're still kind of very much up there in the action, well, you know what, actually, Dr. Bond, you as well, are you are you peeking up to see what the, uh, the Lost Raptors are doing? Yes, yes. Okay, go ahead and everybody roll a careful check. Plus two. Plus two for Dr. Bond. Zero for Trex. So you all look up to try and see where Trax went, and as you're peeking around for him, you cannot see Trax. He has snuck away without any of you noticing. Um, and so that concludes everybody else's turn. All these other dinosaurs are going to be posing very real danger on their next turn initiative, uh, but they're not quite there yet. Uh, Dave, it is your turn. Dave would like to sprint and do his best parkour to kind of jump over the cert the prep tables, and he wants to try and get to the lever and pull it back the other way before the end of his turn. All right, go ahead and roll a quick check. I'm going to put that at moderately difficult. We'll say we'll put that at a plus three. Um, can I invoke his keeping up appearances of being the muscular hero man to get a reroll? Sure. Because I got a minus four. Ooh. Which is, wow. which statistically is very rare with these dice. Yes. Okay, that's a, that's a plus one, so better. Yeah, you leap over... Um, you're rushing forward trying to get your hands on this lever, so you're either going to fail or succeed at a serious cost. I'll succeed at a serious cost. Okay, so you reach out and you pull the lever, and as you do, you kind of trip and fall, and uh, your arm gets kind of wedged beneath the lever as the doors are sliding closed. So you manage to close the doors before the dinosaurs get there, but your arm is caught in between. And uh, you now have a stump just below your elbow where oh. you no longer have a forearm. So uh, go wow. ahead and you're going to take a, we'll call that a moderate consequence. That'll be your <laughs> four stress consequence. Missing an arm. Okay, four stress. Yeah. So I have two more until expiration. Uh, we're going to push this past your normal stress track and just put that straight into your consequences. Okay. Dave, what is your father going to say? Like father, like son. <laughs> All right. We have now set the stage for what a serious consequence looks like. Um, hopefully it wasn't too serious because this is my first time administering a serious consequence. But we'll see what happens. 
I like it, personally. <laughs> all right, that's all that matters. I'll honestly say I didn't quite know what I was getting myself into. I was like, of course I'll take the consequence. I'm saving, you know, our, all of us from fighting, like, 20 dinosaurs. That, that's fine. I'll take whatever it is. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that, but I think it's, stu- it's still worth it. <laughs> Maimed for life. So, yeah, all of the uh, production assistants around, their attention has shifted pretty dramatically in the past few seconds. They're not worried about dinosaurs anymore. They're worried about their star, who is currently bleeding out all over the place. Um, But we'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, We're going to go back to the top of the initiative with Trex and Dr. Bond. Go for it, Doctor. (laughs) Well, I continue to watch the show, and now a little little more... uh... I don't know how to react to the fact that uh, the guy just lost his arm, but, you know, um, lots <laughs> lots going on right now, so we're just going to keep watching. Mm-hmm. I'm just picturing your beady little eyes poking up from behind that table just watching Dave with no arm. <laughs> All right, uh, Trex, what would you like to do? Boy, okay, dinosaurs are gone, door is shut, Dave is bleeding out all over, but I hate Dave. <laughs> I, I would say that my hatred for Dave is overcome at this point, and I'm going to go run over to him, rip off my necktie, and use my three opposable thumbs to form a bandage on the end of his stump and stop the bleeding. Roll a careful check. With a necktie, it's going to be a little bit more difficult than usual. That's a plus two. A plus two. You uh, succeed at a minor cost. So as you're tying up this stump on Dave's wrist, uh, you get a bit of blood kind of splashes up onto your face and into your nostrils, and... (laughs) Oh, (laughs) blood. (sighs) Boy. So uh, take that as you may. Uh, Is there anything else that Trex would like to do on his turn? Uh, The bloodthirstiness kicks in, and... I would like to snap at the nearest thing running by because raptors hunt things that are running, right? That's what they do. All right. So that's going to bring us to everybody else's turn. There's a bunch of production assistants who are rushing in towards you at this point, and one of them gets close to try and check in on Dave and see what's happening. Uh, Go ahead and roll... That'll probably be a quick snap. Roll with quick to attack. This person's going to try and defend with quick as well. Plus three. Plus three. All right, you snap out at this person, and as they're reaching out their hand, you catch them right on the hand, and... Oh, no. Man, there's a lot of people losing their forearms today. This is Star Wars. (laughs) All right, so this production assistant is also kind of freaking out, but... uh, Trex, you have kind of overcome that initial sort of bloodlust now that you are kind of shocked by the impropriety of what you have done. Oh boy. Seeing the chaos and all the all the terrible things going on around me, I'm going to run, jump onto a table, jump over the wall, and into the dino enclosure. All right. Uh, I'm going to say go ahead and roll with quick to uh, try and make that big old leap. That is a zero, but um, can I spend a fate point to make it better? You may. I'm going to do that. Remind me mechanically how it works. I, can I I can do a reroll or I can uh, make it better by one or two? What was it? By two. I'll reroll. Why not? All right. Which uh, aspect are you invoking? <clears throat> Let's see. We'll say the uh, killer instinct. My raptor instincts are taking over. All right. So you take a big old leap, you kick off from the table, and you kind of do a nice flip over the top, land in the enclosure on the other side uh, with all these other dinosaurs kind of still converging towards you. Um, Trex is going to go feral and run off into the woods. All right. So uh, we're going to continue with all of the uh, NPCs. Trex, as you begin running off, let's see, are you trying to be subtle about your running to not attract any additional attention, or are you just going for it? Nope, just going for it. All right, so there are, wow, three of the other dinosaurs kind of peel off and start going in your direction. Um, Peter Applewood, who's been watching all of this happening, uh, people losing arms, uh, he kind of leans in towards Dr. Bond and says, this is legitimately horrifying but it's going to be great for the ratings, let me tell you that. (laughs) So 
Uh, that does it for everybody else at this point. Dave, we're back to you. Uh, your stump is not bleeding anymore. What would you like to do? So Dave's laying there. His mind's working a million miles a minute. Kind of almost a life flashing before the eyes moment. He's like looking at his stump in shock, wondering what could have brought him to this point. Uh, does he see Skag Skags anywhere in the madness? Oh, Skag Skags is still there. Uh, he's just kind of in shock at his station, not really sure what to do. All of his bravado is completely gone right now. So Dave struggles up to his feet and just points across the tent at Skag and just goes, This is your fault. And he starts stumbling forward, but instead of like jumping over or parkouring, he's just using his one arm to shove tables out of the way and just push past everything, marching straight for Skag. All right. Uh, we'll see how he responds to that. Trex and Dr. Bond, we're going to go back to you. Uh, let's start with Dr. Bond, uh, because Trex just did a lot of stuff. How are you responding to all this going on? Well, I stand up at this point, and I kind of walk towards the glass. And I think to myself, and I say, I, well, I say to Peter, I guess, Incredible. He decided he could have gone with a higher life form, but he went to his, react to his natural state. Maybe he's found his purpose out in the wild. Maybe a raptor can never become one of us. And he realized that. And now he's out there, hopefully finding out who he truly is. This is indeed very good for my research. All right, and you're taking down notes and whatnot. Uh, Trex, what are you doing? Well, just like, what's going through your heart and mind right now? I don't belong there. I don't know if I belong here, but I've never tried it. So I'm going to try. I tried there and it didn't work. I kept biting people's arms off and eating rats and disappointing everyone around me. So I'm going to go and find some place where hopefully I won't disappoint anyone. And I'm going to be a dinosaur instead of trying to be a man running off into the bushes. All right. So we're going to go to everybody else in this combat. Uh, we're going to start with Skag Skags as he sees Dave moving up towards him. He's just like, okay, now, I know that I was trying to sabotage this competition here, but I did not plan any of this. I did not plan for you to lose your arm. I did not plan for there to be any blood. This is way above my pay grade here. The slow march continues. All right. He is going to try and, uh, like, throw his table over to create a barricade to try and defend himself. Uh, But he is not strong enough to lift it. He's just like trying to toss the table but uh, his puny little arms do not have the force for it. Can I just say that I feel like that's like the most intimidating image ever. This like one-armed Dave slow marching shoving tables out of the way like bleeding stump. It's terrifying. I'm going to have nightmares. (laughs) So now we're going to go into the pen Trex, as you're running along these other dinosaurs along with you, you look up into the sky and you can see a pteranodon, its wings outspread, flying in the direction of the compound. And you can see astride its back is Professor Fortinbras. What in blazes is he doing up there? There are many things that he did not tell me. And as he's flying, he looks down and he notices you and he kind of breaks in midair and has the Pteranodon flap down towards you, and he leans down and says, Trex, my wonderful boy, my sweet creation, we have finally revealed ourselves to the world. Everybody else, they were just, they were too simple-minded. We have dinosaurs at our command. We can do whatever we want with this world, and they can't stop us. You lied to me, Professor. I was only trying to protect you, Trex. I was trying to protect you from the soft human sentimentality that I foolishly placed inside of you. We can make this a world of reptiles. How many more are there? How many did you create? Well, there was Trex, and there was Trzk, and (laughs) now there's Trex and Trax. Only the four of you, uh, to this point... I, I understand that you're probably feeling a little bit betrayed right now, and that's that's okay, that's okay. But if you join me, we can take this world and make it our own. We can reshape it in the image of scales and fangs. I don't know what I am. You've made me something in between. 
something that doesn't belong anywhere. And he looks down at you with a disappointed frown on his face and says, If you do not know, then you are not with me. And he jabs his heels into the sides of the pteranodon, and it flaps back up into the air and says, Everybody in the world is watching this show. I have a captive audience. And he goes flying towards the compound. (laughs) This feels like the Truman Show all of a sudden. (laughs) Yeah, we have taken a pretty big zag. I'm, I feel like as soon as an arm was lost, this changed in tenor quite a bit. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he goes flying towards the compound. He's trying to get to the cameras. Dave, it is your turn. All right, so as I get closer to the table, I'd like to reach out and uh, grab a sharpened whisk and come around the table <laughs> and try and uh, stab Skag with it. <laughs> and... Uh, you pick it up and Skag sees that and he says, I knew I shouldn't have been sharpening my whisk. I was just trying to do it for looks, but this has turned on me so bad. Yeah, go ahead and uh, attack with... This is this seems like a pretty forceful thing, trying to stab somebody with a whisk. Uh, so go ahead and roll with forceful. It's going to be a plus three. Plus three. He only got a plus two. So you succeed. Perfect. Then I come around the table and I'll just like kind of stab it into his stomach. All right, yeah, he uh, he is not looking too great. Uh, he's nowhere near as hearty as you are, can't take as much stress. So, yeah, he's already looking like uh, another good hit could probably take him out. But he looks up towards you and he says, Well, I guess I got what I wanted. I got the tearjerker. Oh, goodness. And, uh, yeah, anything else that Dave would like to do on his turn? Nope, that's it. All right. That brings us back to Dr. Bond and Trex. Take it away, Doctor. Dr. Bond. (laughs) Dr. Bond looks out. He makes a face. And he thinks to himself. He looks at his book. And he looks up. And he turns around to Peter again. And says, you know, I think Trex has taught me something. That being a higher life form may not be for everyone. That sometimes one's purpose can exist out as a lower light form, as the more primal life form. And just like him, I think I've had enough of this high life form. <laughs> <laughs> and he drops his book and he runs into the forest. All right. Uh, yeah, you go rushing off into the forest. And as you're stumbling through, uh, you manage to find a place where there's a break in the wall with the forest. You push yourself in, and you stumble directly into Trex on the other side of the wall as he's in the midst of this emotional turmoil. Uh, Trex, how do you respond to this? Doctor, what are you doing here? I've done it. I'm free. I want to be like you. I want to be out here in the wild. I can't take it anymore. Maybe I just wasn't meant for study or for for higher life form, for thinking, and I should just be free of this thinking and study and books and just throw it out the window and become who maybe I was meant to be. Doctor, I think you have a better grasp on this than even I did when I jumped over that wall. Let's do it. Let's go out and become primal life forms together. With our elevated brains, we will sink low and be better than we were for it. So you guys begin bonding over your desires to just throw everything away. Uh, as this is happening, Professor Fortinbra lands in the middle of the compound on his pteranodon, and he turns towards all of the cameras and says, People of planet Earth, you witness before you your future. A future which has scales and fangs. Is that a good trademark? I like it. Uh, He continues on and says, Now some of you are probably afraid. Some of you like this little guy right here. And he snaps his fingers and the pteranodon lunges out with its beak and picks up Timmy Tommy Tutum by the back of his apron and is holding him off the ground. Timmy Tommy Tutum is just flailing his arms and legs in utter panic. And Professor Fortinbras says, Now dinosaurs are dangerous. That is true. That's why I am here to make sure that you all get dinosaur insurance. The dinosaurs will not hurt you as long as you pay me a lot of money every month. Does that make sense, everybody? Uh, That's about as far as he can get during this turn. Uh, But he's starting to monologue to the world through this fantastic stage he's found for himself. Um, Dave, that brings us to your turn. 
So looking over and seeing uh, Timmy Tommy Tutum being picked up, Timmy Tommy Tutum's the only one Dave likes, and so he gets kind of this flash of rage. And he grabs a sharpened fork, just like a regular old dinner fork that uh, Skag has sharpened, and he grabs it, flips it around like a trident, and throws <laughs> it at the dinosaur. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, go ahead and, I mean, you're making some pretty forceful choices here. Go ahead and attack with forceful. Uh, so that's going to be a plus two. Pteranodon got a minus two. So you have succeeded with style. You can reduce the damage by one to generate a boost, or you can just have it be the full four damage. Uh, I want it to be a full damage and hit it like, I don't know, somewhere vulnerable in an eye or something. All right. So you get this fork right in the eye. Uh, the Tranodon shrieks out in pain and drops Timmy Tommy Tutum back onto the ground. And Professor Fortinbra sees this happen. He turns towards you and says, Ah, I suppose a demonstration is in order. What will happen to those who do not get their dinosaur insurance, Dave Skullcrusher. That brings us back to the top with Trex and Dr. Bond. Can we hear this? Is this being like broadcast over the loudspeakers or anything like that? Yes, very much so. I'm ready to be free, Trex. I'm ready to join the wild. What say ye? I am, I am too, but, but doctor, it sounds like our friends are in trouble. Dave and, and Tibby Tommy and, Professor Fortinbra is evil, and we need to stop him first. Is that something a raptor would do? Do we have a sense of right and wrong and justice? I'm not just any raptor, and I jump back over the fence and try to <laughs> land on Fortinbra. All right. Uh, go ahead and roll. Make that either quick or flashy, I'll say. Flashy for plus five. Plus five. Five. Wow, he does not know that you are there. Uh, he only gets a plus two, so you have succeeded with style. Uh, do you want to do full three damage, or do you want to back it off one for a boost? Uh, I'll back it off one for a boost. All right, so Professor Fortinbra takes two stress. You just completely blindside him. You knock him off of the Pteranodon. You got him pinned down to the ground, and the boost that I'm going to give to you is I'm on top now. Nice. Top dog. Top of the food chain. So yeah, you've got Professor Fortinbra pinned beneath you. Uh, Dr. Bond, how do you want to respond to this? I go and I and I take the raptor stance and I do the same jump that he did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, not having incredibly long and powerful velociraptor legs, uh, go ahead and roll a forceful check to see if you can jump your way over. A plus two. Plus two. You feel this primalness just welling up inside of you, and you leap up. You manage to grab onto the top with your fingertips, and it's a little bit ungainly. Uh, you're kind of flailing your legs, trying to get traction, but you eventually pull yourself up over. You're on top of the wall now. And I do, like, at the end of a Jurassic Park with, like, the Tyrannosaurus just kind of <laughs> roaring in pride. And that's, I start doing that on top of the wall. <laughs> All right. So that brings us now to Professor Fortinbra. Oh, everything has turned on him so quickly. His pteranodon is blinded. He's pinned to the ground under this person who he tried to give so much love to. And there's a dude just screaming on top of a wall. Um, he, he looks up towards you, Trucks, and he says, My boy, my boy, my dearest darling creation. <laughs> We can we can take this world together. We can make it whatever we want to be. Trex, what do you want this world to be? I don't know the answer to that, Professor, but you can save it for the judge. And as you say that, he narrows his eyes and says, We'll see about that. He's going to try and bust his way free. Uh, go ahead and roll a forceful check to try and keep him pinned. That's a two. Two. He got a minus one. Um, so he like tries to bust himself out. He's just said this awesome line and he's like, oh, okay, okay. Maybe, maybe we will see what the church has to say about that. <laughs> We're going to go to the Pteranodon. It is definitely heavily injured, but it's not taken out yet. Uh, it's just flailing around wildly in its pain. And we're going to see who ends up taking the brunt of that. It is going to be 
Dr. Bond. As it's just flailing its beak around wildly, it's going to attack you with forceful. How would you like to try and defend yourself against this Tyranitom? I'm going to say flashy. <laughs> All right. Well, you are very flashy right now. So what does, what does your flashy defense look like as you're on top of this wall just screaming like a dinosaur? <laughs> it's, it's exactly how you picture it. Just me screaming like a dinosaur and like roaring at him. <laughs> All right. And as it's just swinging around wildly, it hears this noise from the side. Uh, go ahead and roll your defend. I got a plus one. Plus one. So that is going to end up being a tie. So on a tie, he doesn't harm you, but does gain a boost. And the boost that the Pteranodon is going to get is... What boost would I give a Pteranodon? The things that I never anticipated I would have to do when I decided to invent this show. And that's a question that you never thought you'd ask yourself. But here we are. I mean, half of us are missing our arms. The Pteranodon's missing an eye. Yeah, the boost that this Pteranodon is going to get is just Primal Rage. That's the boost we're giving the Pteranodon. Makes sense. All right, so Dave, you've got this primally raging Pteranodon. You've got Professor Fortinbra on the ground. You've got Skag Skag slowly bleeding out. What would you like to do? So Dave, seeing the Pteranodon attacking uh, Dr. Bond and seeing Skag bleeding out next to him, uh, Dave is going to pick up Skag, carry him out towards the Pteranodon, and go, uh, Oi! Oi! Mr. Pteranodon! I got a little snack for you! And I'm going to toss Skag like a treat and say, Go fetch! All right. Roll a flashy chick. That's going to be a... Well, currently it's a plus one, but can I use another one of my fate points to invoke uh, keeping up appearances again to reroll it? Or actually, I'll just add two to it. I'll add two and make it a plus three. So yeah, you toss Skag Skags towards the Pteranodon. We'll see how that resolves in uh, just a moment. Uh, Trex, you have Professor Fortinbra um, still trapped beneath you. What would you like to do? He's trapped there. He can't get out. I'll turn down to Timmy Tommy Tutum and say, Tommy, my boy, I'm sorry you had to see all this, but why don't you go get yourself to safety? We've got these guys handled. And Timmy Tommy Tutum, as he's picking himself up off the ground, says, You know what? I feel like I might want to try and make some massive stand here and try and prove that I'm a brave person, but I'm going to do what smart people do and I'm going to listen to you. And uh, he goes over to you and just places a hand on your shoulder for a moment and says, Thank you, Mr. Trex. You're the hero today. And he runs off into the forest. And as he's running, I say, Being smart is overrated. Be free. And Timmy Tommy just goes, Freedom! Go with the establishment! <laughs> and he just rushes off into the forest even further. <laughs> I think I heard my mom and dad say that once. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Dr. Bond, anything else that you're wanting to do? I'm going to jump off the wall like a raptor and run. Okay, so you jump down off the wall <laughs> further into the fray. Um, we're going to go to the Pteranodon at this point. Uh, it's very interested in this treat that uh, Dave has offered to it. It's going to... Oh, that's a good roll. Skag Skag is going to try and defend. That's not a good roll. Um, it just... I mean, there's enough violence already that I've described. Skag Skags is, uh, he is no more. He is a Pteranodon treat. <laughs> okay, and Professor Fortinbra pinned down on the ground. He can see that he's just lost absolutely everything. And he says, okay, okay, fine. I give up. I give up. The world is not going to be mine today. Trex, I thought that I had you, but you have too much of human kindness in your heart. Ironically, it was you who put it there, Professor. Thank you, and curse you. And at this point, uh, some of the production assistants have come up with the safari rifles, and they are beginning to unload on the Pteranodon, trying to get things back under wraps. So at this point, th there's a lot that's happened. There's a dead Pteranodon. There is a dead Skag Skags. There is a defeated Professor Fortinbra who's giving himself up to the park security. And Peter Applewood stands up at this point and he turns towards you as everything is kind of wrapping down. And he says, well, 
That was quite a competition we had there just barely. There was a lot that happened, a lot of interesting techniques that were employed in this challenge. Now, I'm going to going to have to do some sort of rating, I suppose. Dave, you are the reason that Skag Skags is dead. I'm sorry. I just can't commend your techniques or your methods here. I'm afraid that you're probably not going to be passing this uh, round of the competition. Trex, I appreciate your turn back towards humanity, but your waffliness was a little bit disappointing. I mean, I like to see a bit more of firmness in this sort of situation. Um, Timmy Tommy Two Tum, he's gone. Who knows where he's heading? Um, I suppose that means, uh, Dr. Stephen Bond, you have, uh, not baked anything that is of substance, but, uh, <laughs> you've shown quite a bit of growth and vigor. Dr. Stephen Bond, you are today's star baker. I get in front of the camera, looking like a raptor, and, <laughs> <laughs> and I say, this is what I've become. I have become a raptor to all you little boys and girls. This is who you can you can become who you want to be. Understand who you are and understand what you want to be and go and chase it. Achieve your dreams. And I am going to acquire a taste for rat for myself. Peter Applewood turns towards the camera and says, Well, you heard it here first. Tomorrow's competition will be rat pot pie. I hope you enjoy the remainder of this season. We still have three contestants left. Ah, I don't know where it's going to go but I'm paid to be here. And he <laughs> <laughs> just throws his hands up in the air and goes walking out of the compound as we uh, conclude today's episode of Jurassic Bake Off. And uh, let's do one of those sort of post credit scenes. What happens to everybody after the fame and fortune? Uh, let's start with Dave. What does Dave do after this chaotic situation in this baking competition. So, uh, Dave is, uh, after he gets home, he's disowned by his father for no longer being able to bake, uh, due to his missing arm. And so he, uh, becomes homeless and has to live at his gym where he used to train for MMA, but he can't do that anymore <laughs> either because he's missing an arm. So he starts, uh, creating his own style of one armed martial art. And he eventually forms his own counter to MMA, which is uh, one-armed fighting, where either one-armed contestants or able-bodied contestants can compete, but they have to tie one arm behind their back. And it's like MMA, but you can only use one arm. Nice. Dave manages to find some success out of his destitution. Dr. Bond, what do you do after all this happens? So, time has passed, and he, <laughs> he is reduced to wearing um, ragged clothes, and his pants are just ripped and stuff, but he's still wearing his high socks and loafers. <laughs> and he's running around the forest. Um, he has made, he is, um, with, his, with his knowledge of raptors and, his, and how they work, he has been accepted into a pack of raptors, and he goes and runs with them into the forest, into the, into the unknown. <laughs> Right, you embrace this new life of freedom away from the academia. You have what you've always wanted. You know what it's like for a raptor to live its regular day-to-day -day life, because you are living that. Professor Chumwald wonders why he never gets your letter. Trex, what do you do after all of this? Trex is still torn between the human world and the animal world. He looks at Dr. Stephen Bond and sees his full embrace of the feral and admires it but cannot quite bring himself to do that and looks at the human world of organized fighting and gyms and TV shows and things like that and can't quite find his place there either. And so Trex makes his way to an island of his own, not Dinosaur Island where Dinosaur Theme Park is, but his own small island off the coast of Maine. And he lives there <laughs> studying and writing and finding his own purpose in life. As you all diverge in your own separate directions, the pleasantly proper baking competition has skyrocketed in its popularity. Timmy Tommy Tutum has taken his place alongside Peter Applewood as a full-time judge. <laughs> Dinosaur Themeland has been decommissioned. Professor Fortinbras 
Uh, he's been put into one of those maximum security prisons that you see supervillains go to in the hero movies, and uh, the world is a little bit quieter for all of you, but it's a little bit louder because you were there. You have all made your mark upon the world, and nobody will ever be the same because of it. And that concludes our story of Dinosaur Theme Land. Thanks for listening to Improv Tabletop, everybody. We'll be back next month with more adventures in a brand new setting. If you want more, go ahead and subscribe. Maybe even give us a review. We'd be just incredibly happy if you would help us spread the word. Thank you for joining us in this experiment that we've set out on. And hopefully we'll continue to see more of you. Uh, We're also on Twitter, at Improv Tabletop. If you'd like to suggest either a setting for us to play in or an aspect for one of our characters to use, just tweet about us using hashtag ImptabSetting or hashtag ImptabAspect. That's ImptAb, I-M-P-T-A-B. Let's do a round of plugs. As always, we've got iCast Fireball. Go check that out. In addition to that, uh, I've decided that I'm going to be doing ski art. Um, It's kind of like if you've ever seen the Nazca lines, like if you see them from the ground, you don't see much. But if you go up into a helicopter, you can see, oh, hey, there's a dancing person or there's a massive flying bird. I'm going to be doing that, uh, but with skis. So if you ever happen to be flying over like, you know, Grand Targhee or anything like that, then you might see, I don't know, a picture of Pikachu or something. (laughs) And uh, if you're interested in seeing my work that I am doing, you can find that at imakeartwhileiski.weebly.com. Caleb, you got anything you want to plug? Yeah, guys, I have an audiobook coming out very soon. It's called No King, No Country by Wayne Grant. If you feel like it would be fun to listen to my voice for about 12 hours, then go check it out. It's a good voice. I would recommend it. Thank you. I could listen to that voice all day. It's what my wife said before she married me. And now she has to. Oh, how things change. (laughs) Uh, Evan, what you got going on? Uh, Yeah, so after a uh, brief stay at a hospital in Honolulu, I'm back. Um, The bee uh, experiment did not go super well last week, but like we discussed, (laughs) you live for the danger. This week, though, I will be uh, taking a step back. And I'm going to be spending 48 hours trying to escape from the world's largest pile of feather pillows. Uh, So uh, they're going to be all placed on top of me. And I've got a 48 hour time limit to try and dig my way out of it. So, um, yeah, that once again will be uh, streamed uh, on my YouTube. Um, Turns out the last uh, name I had for my channel uh, was already taken by a young artist. Um, So my new one you have to decipher from a series of uh, encoded tweets I will send out from my Twitter account. That is at Federal Farmers. So. Very nice. And uh, JP, what do you have going on? Uh, I'm just going to go to a local library and swap book sleeves on each other's books. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I can't wait to I can't wait to think that I am checking out a copy of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, but it turns out it's actually the old man in the sea. Got him. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks for joining us here in the world of Jurassic Bake Off. I'm Ned Wilcock, your host and GM, and I've been joined by Caleb Anderton, your prehistoric hippie. Evan Peterson, you're excited to not have to pretend to be fit anymore. Justin Porter, a.k.a. JP, and you can be who you want, kids. Much love and stuff. We'll catch you next week on Improv Tabletop. Mm